our dear friend, our brother, Reverend Barber, one of the most moral individuals I've ever met in my life. Reverend William J. Barber was in fact at a movie theater, as you know. He was discriminated against because of his disability. He now has hired Harry Daniels, civil rights attorney. Once again, another dear friend of mine. Harry's been on the program, helped us with a lot of cases right here at Indisputable to get justice for people around the world. Here's a reminder of what happened. I want to take you out. I cannot go out. Okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, you are removed from the property and I'm going to take you out and I'll if, charge if you, you at my car. That's fine. If you if you want to take me out and leave the property, then I'll do that. Yep, that's what I want to do. All right, well, I'm, you're going to have to put me back I've been in the White House with this chair. Yeah, They've called an officer of the law, the AME Theater in Greenville, North Carolina. They would not make amends to simply do the right thing, but we'll deal with it. They brought this officer. What's your name, Mr. Officer? Can I shake your hand? I ain't trying to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is Officer Lemon. I want to know your name. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate your cooperation. Sorry for the, the way this turned out. We'll be back in another day. Okay, that's, that's fine, but you do have to leave the What up, my dear brother, full mass? When I tell you he is a walking beacon of integrity, morality, ethics, he has such goodness inside of him that the cats who play games but present well, the individuals who manipulate the system in order to make themselves seem like supermen, they can't be in the same room with him because he has too much integrity off record. And on record, when I saw this, I cried because I know our brother had to be fuming inside, but he held his composure. Per CBS 9 News, our dear Bishop William J. Barber II held a second press conference on Monday in Greenville, North Carolina, to talk about his meeting with the head of AMC Theaters and to announce. What his next move will be, okay? He was removed from a North Carolina movie theater last month. Barbara was joined by advocates with the American Association of People with Disabilities. I want you to keep that picture up because I've seen some of the social media chatter about the law. You all who believe that he could not do that, that's incorrect. The federal law states that establishments such as this, they have to make all reasonable accommodations for an individual, regardless of what they may have available or not. He knew that law, that's why he brings his chair. As we covered prior, the well-known civil rights activist was escorted out by police from the AMC Fire Tower 12 Theater in Greenville during a screening of The Color Purple. Barber, who suffers from a form of arthritis, was kicked out for bringing his own stool. Now remember, he's been allowed in, he purchased a ticket, he went past front desk, he went past everyone, he was allowed in, okay? He was kicked out for bringing his own stool. AMC previously apologized on record to the pastor for how they handled the incident. Earlier this month, the former North Carolina NAACP president met with Adam Aaron, president of AMC theaters, saying afterward that quote, while I am encouraged by a meeting, we have more to consider. This isn't about me or one night in December. It's about the law. 
It's about treating every man, woman, and child who has disabilities with compassion and dignity. Elaborated more on the meeting, he wrote, quote, when we got into the conversation, I almost immediately recognized he had been given some wrong information about what had happened. Barbara said, the first thing I perceived is that there were some people who were trying to make my protest and resistance the problem. He seemed to suggest that they had done everything reasonable and nothing else could have been done. That's not what the law says. You're supposed to use reasonable judgment on an individual case by case basis. That is what the federal law says. That is not a recommendation. Barbara said there were some other questions also brought up in the meeting. Quote, even though we were supposed to be meeting just us, he mentioned he had talked to his counsel, Barbara said. When I could see these distortions had somehow got into the framework, I said, well, I need to turn over everything to my counsel. Counsel, got him. Civil rights attorney Harry Daniels to the rescue. Barbara also announced Monday he is working with this federal civil rights attorney and others who will oversee the investigation into this incident. Daniel said they're hoping to change how employees deal with future situations. Quote, we're looking for an amicable resolution in which both parties can come to an agreement. Daniel said, training is a big one. We're not in the position of terminating or firing. That doesn't serve the overall desired purpose. But if we can maybe get them trained so they can train others with the experiences they have. Barbara said he's fighting for these changes so people with disabilities now and in the future don't have to. It's bigger than me, he said. AMC has 10,000 screens and serves over a billion people. If you live long enough, you're going to need these same laws, end quote. This is a race case, a human race issue. At some point, if you are blessed to live long enough, you may find yourself in a similar situation. Daniel said, make no mistake, this was an injustice, not just to Bishop Barber, but to all of us. Every family knows someone who needs additional accommodations. Quote, we all have to play our part so that those who are differently disabled are treated fairly and accommodated. Moving forward, Daniels will be meeting with AMC representative, uh, representatives on Barbara's behalf while they find a resolution. They said a lawsuit is not being brought up at this time. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Until there's a resolution here, um, I will be boycotting all AMC theaters and connected assets. I'm encouraging you to do the same. Everybody, the message of this is multifaceted. Number one, no one bothered to Google the law. You understand? It's right there in the subsection of the law. No one bothered to say, you know what? Uh, the brother may actually be right, so let me Google it quick, quickly. They called 911. It took more energy to call 911, file an official police report, get somebody in there to break the law. Cop comes. He doesn't bother to Google the law. He didn't even call the supervisor. Hey, Mr. Supervisor, I got a question for you. Is this a civil issue or a criminal issue? Is this trespassing or is the movie theater, the corporate interest wrong? Didn't matter. Corporation told you to fetch and you fetched. Yeah, got the right one this time. All right, we're going to follow this. Obviously, give you updates as they come. Uh, such a sad situation. Wisney, I was uh, horrified this happened. He's a good brother. Uh, but what say you? And yeah, I mean, in case the folks watching at home um, are not familiar with Reverend Barber's work, uh, this guy has essentially dedicated his life uh, to the service of others, particularly the poorest and most marginalized people in our country. Uh, yep. This is like very important work that this guy, this guy has dedicated himself to. Like we're talking about organizing, voting drives, all kinds of like all kinds of stuff down there in South Carolina um, and beyond. This guy is a huge, important figure in the movement. 
um, to, you know, further our country in the direction of its potential, right? Um, and so you take all of that away. Um, most people are just showing up to a movie theater just expecting the base level of human dignity to yeah. be shown to them. Um, and it's not too much for somebody with disabilities to just have a reasonable accommodation made. This is not something special. He just has his own chair. That's it. In a place full of them. In a place full of right. chairs. Um, he brought his own chair so that he could sit and enjoy the movie like the rest of them. And, and I always say this when this kind of thing happens to very prominent people. Um, we don't need to make Reverend Barber a saint, right? Um, he's a great guy, period. And that should be enough. But it goes beyond that. Um, luckily for him... You know, he's prominent enough. He could make a stink about this and he could get something done um, on behalf of people that come behind him. Um, you know, there are normal people who this might have happened to and they ruin their damn day, month, you know, behind something like this, behind being embarrassed and forcibly being removed from the freaking color purple. And yep. so that's what I think about, man, the people who don't have the reach and the stretch that Reverend Barber has to correct the wrong like this. These kinds of things happen every single day and it goes unsaid. But, you know, we salute our dear brother for stepping up to the plate and doing what needs to be done to right a wrong. Yep. Uh, the irony of the movie playing The Color Purple, which highlights, which highlights the reality of bias, racism and systemic oppression. Um, and in the middle of that movie, they engage in the same activity that the movie is about. 